Okay, so the only reason I sound out of it earlier is because I recorded earlier in the day, like pretty early, and I'm too lazy to record it again because this is just a commentary. It's not a video essay, so my bad. I was just really excited to get this video out as soon as possible. Hey everyone, I didn't mean to make this video longer than it is. I was gonna use the same robot voice I did with my Kibo video, but then the script ended up being like 20 pages. This is gonna be a pattern for me. I'll make a video essay with my own voice, then I'll make a video that's more of a commentary, mostly with some low effort editing, and depending on how long the script is, I'll use a robot voice instead. While I'm still gonna be nuanced with my thoughts, I'm also gonna be more blunt, and this will be more of a well-structured rant than anything, but please don't harass anybody I mentioned in here, even if my criticism for them is a little forward. In case you haven't noticed, I'm a big Disney fan. Insert obligatory Kingdom Hearts mention here. I may be a little bit of a hater sometimes, and I'm cynical here and there, but I also like joy. I like escapism. I like to enjoy myself. I love a lot of Disney animated movies. I grew up with them. And fun fact, Ariel's my favorite Disney princess, even more than Belle. The Little Mermaid's my favorite Disney movie too. I've been juggling which one was really my favorite for a little bit of my head after actually watching Beauty and the Beast for the first time in college. I very much felt some FOMO with the latter movie and misconstrued it as a surprise that I will love an older Disney movie when I've been obsessed with The Little Mermaid since I was four and it's older than the Beauty and the Beast. But anyway, I've re watched this fun fish film too many times to count and I'll continue to re-watch it over and over again until the end of time. Not only do I know the songs, I also remember most of the orchestral soundtrack. It's serious. So you can't tell me squat about Ariel to make me dislike her. I don't care what you say, I don't care what you do. She's done nothing wrong in her life. Jodi Benson is such an icon for playing Ariel in the original movie. She sounds so passionate when she sings and acts at all, but her role as Ariel is on another level. Like her impact is something else. This movie's just so grand. The animation, the storytelling, the stakes, the whole mermaid thing. I started loving mermaids because of this movie and I, I freaking love the way Ariel's hair moves underwater. Like look, like look at it. So yeah. Anyway, though I'm a big Disney fan, it's basically my brand to be critical. I don't like every piece of Disney media, which is where the topic of live action remakes comes in. Personally, I don't like most of the ones I've seen. I don't think they're as creative and fresh as they could be, and many of them don't respect the spirit of the original source material. It's fine if you like some of them yourself, but I mostly don't. In my opinion, very few recent remakes have successfully stood on their own while still maintaining what made the original movies work. 2015 Cinderella is the only other good example I've seen, but I heard people also liked Maleficent and 2016's Jungle Book. If you include Tim Burton's first Alice in Wonderland adaptation, then I've watched five of these remakes before The Little Mermaid one. Cinderella, The Lion King, Alice in Wonderland, Beauty and the Beast, and Mulan. The only one I actually liked was Cinderella, but despite how much money these movies make at the box office, many critics and regular people share the same sentiments I do about these recent remakes as a whole, wishing they'd be better and, at the very least, way more spaced out. And for mini rant, I also personally wish our society respected animation more. I don't know if these remakes would cease to exist if that were the case, cause Japan has a huge anime market and still remakes a lot of anime into live action versions. But maybe the Oscars award show wouldn't have trashed animation like it did last year, and it definitely wouldn't have gotten three live action Disney princesses to joke about it either. I really don't think these actresses would mock a medium like this of their own accord, since they've all played characters that were originally from very popular animated movies. Like the math is not mathing. 
They wouldn't have gotten such prolific roles as these princesses if it weren't for the original movies that came before. Let's be honest, the Oscars set them up. I don't know if anybody pointed fingers at these actresses for reading off the script, but save that energy for the Academy instead. It looked like the showrunners learned their lesson though, because this year's Oscars had Dwayne Johnson give a very good speech about animation and the hard work that goes into it. And then he proceeded to announce to the whole world this year that he's gonna star in a live-action Moana remake soon? I don't know why. The movie's not even 10 years old. Um, I just hope the Academy starts appreciating the hard work that goes into animation too, much more than they do right now. So anyway, The Little Mermaid remake is the only other remake I've genuinely been interested in besides the Cinderella one. Even though I think these remakes could be better, this casting choice was what made me want to see this one in the first place because Hallie has a beautiful singing voice. And she's also been an actor in Grownish, which I don't care for but still liked seeing her in, so I was excited to see her take on Ariel's character. But there is this nagging voice in the back of my mind that said I wouldn't like this remake either. I saw screenshots and clips that looked weirdly desaturated for no reason. Then I saw official designs of animal characters like Flander and Sebastian that weren't stylized enough for clear facial expressions. So they just looked like regular animals and Sebastian's design was a little uncanny. I don't like it. I don't like it. Aquafina was in it which made the nagging even worse. Despite Hallie being guaranteed to carry her role as Ariel, it seems like everything surrounding her wasn't going to be very enjoyable. Definitely not enjoyable enough for me to rewatch on my own in the future. But then everything changed on April 26. Hallie's version of Part of Your World was officially uploaded on YouTube and all my fear evaporated. I was much more excited than ever before and they actually let her sing with her real voice instead of auto-tuning and pitching her voice so badly that it was very obvious. No disrespect to Emma Watson, but uh, can you tell that I don't like the Beauty and the Beast remake? This is my least favorite Disney remake. The promo for this remake was also super good. It was promoted and promoted hard. The picture book illustrations I've seen about the movie were so cute. I like this art style the most. Even doll companies made really nice Halle Bailey Ariel dolls. They didn't even bother with that one doll of Emma Watson for the Beauty and the Beast remake. And we'll never really know why. <laughs> I've never seen people actively excited for a Disney live-action remake in real time before. I mean, people have said they liked these remakes after watching them, but I've never seen a fandom surrounding one of them, and especially before it was even released in theaters. I was excited to see it myself, and it's pretty surreal to see so many netizens defend a Disney remake. Isn't it amazing what perfect casting can do? I don't know. Then on May 9th, I was scrolling through Twitter at 4am because I couldn't go back to sleep, and I saw clips of the Little Mermaid remake's official world premiere, where the director, Rob Marshall, kindly reminded everyone that Halle Bailey was the best choice for Ariel and nobody got even close to her level. That put a huge smile on my face. She was the first person he saw for the auditions and he's repeatedly bragged about picking her for Ariel like he's literally won the lottery. And in a way, when it comes to casting, he really did. Like, ooh. <laughs> According to Jen Wong's Vogue article, Rob said, We started to see other people, many other people, hundreds of other people, but the bar had already been set and no one ever surpassed that bar. Like, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> he really said that he thought about Hallie the whole time the auditions are open too. I'm very positive all those white girls with dyed red hair were chattering their teeth like a cartoon character from hearing Hallie's voice outside the audition room. And for the director to constantly brag about her too by admitting he cried when he heard her sing Part of Your World because it was just that beautiful and passionate? Did he even get emotional when he heard you sing Part of Your World? Probably not. If I was one of those people who not only heard her sing before my audition, but also saw how much the director told the public that no one auditioning even got close to her talent, you would never heard from me again. I'm so serious. As soon as I heard that last note and I want more, I would have made an appointment at the nearest salon to dye my hair back to its natural color. Like... Oh, oh god. I'm not gonna make a fool of myself. I also thought it was sweet that Jodie Benson looked very excited to be at the premiere and talk to Hallie. 
They reminded me of all the cute fan art people made of the two versions of Ariel mingling to celebrate both movies and Jodie's defense of Hallie for this role. Seeing all these celebrities wear fashion reminiscent of the sea and mermaid aesthetics was so fun. And you can only Rose was there. Like, what a moment. Many critics who went to the world premiere tweeted their enjoyment of the movie too. Some netizens joked that Grace Randolph, this popular critic online, was a known certified hater for many popular movies, but she actually liked this remake and called it the best one Disney's made. Honestly, that's saying something, because it's rare that these remakes are more unanimously praised. Again, despite the box office numbers, there are lots of people who dislike many of these adaptations, including me. So if a certified hater likes The Little Mermaid remake, then there's more to praise about this besides Hallie's performance, right? That's a good sign. That's a really good sign. And lo and behold, it was actually a good movie. I only saw the movie once and this video is already longer than I wanted it to be, so these are my very general thoughts. I really like the Little Mermaid remake. It respects the spirit of the original source material and builds on it and its narrative. Bigger things are improved on, but some smaller things were a little lacking. Most of my qualms are nitpicks, but I loved what they did with a lot of the newer stuff. I don't think it's as tightly made as the original movie, which is my problem with all of the remakes. But it was still really good. It was really good. I really liked it. It was a really good movie. Halle Bailey's casting is perfect for Ariel. She had the voice, she had the acting skills, she was so expressive and passionate just like Jodie Benson was in the original movie, and it's obvious why she was picked. She makes this version of Ariel hers. The other actors were fun too, especially with Jacob Tremblay voice acting for Flounder. Melissa McCarthy was funny as Ursula, she was funny. Jonah Howard King was great as Eric and brought some energy to him that was much needed. Davy Diggs was really good as Sebastian, he got some genuine laughs out of me. Aquafina. Okay, well, she was actually funny sometimes, let's go, too. Ursula manipulating Ariel through Triton being controlling and dismissive was so good. It made Ursula's manipulation more impactful to me. I really liked that. They were onto something when they wrote that in. I completely forgot that Ursula and Triton were siblings in this version, but I still liked how she got Ariel to do her bidding. It's almost really good how she tricks Ariel because she tricks her with being nice, like being maternal and thinking, yeah, your dad is doing you so wrong. You need a woman like me in your life to show you where to go, to lead you. It was sweet that Triton said he and the other Mer people were gonna support Ariel no matter what. I loved that. Like, what do you want me to say? The new character songs for Ariel and Eric were really cool and added some more dimension to their characters. You got Halle Bailey to sing in your movie, of course you're gonna get her to sing more. The new reprise for Part of Your World broke my heart so bad. You really feel for Ariel even more than you already do. It sounded like she was questioning if making the deal with Ursula was even worth it. She's done nothing wrong in her life, I'm telling you. She also defeated Ursula herself, which I thought was surprisingly interesting the way it was done. She wasn't maneuvering the ship like a captain or anything, so don't go complaining about her being a girl boss. She turned the steering wheel once and flopped on deck as soon as the ship headed for Ursula. She was literally fighting for her life. She defeated Ursula in the musical version too, in a different way, but more importantly, it makes more narrative sense. Eric had no deeper vendetta against Ursula besides, you kidnapped my girlfriend. <laughs> like, of course Ariel would be the one to land the final blow. She's the one who made the deal with Ursula in the first place, and Ursula killed her father in front of her this time. Well, what about Eric? He was still helping her either way, and Ariel told Triton that he helped her, but this isn't really about him. Like, yeah, I wouldn't have minded Eric saving her, because she did save him before, so they'd both save each other like in the original movie, but I think this is fine. As someone who thinks it's refreshing to see black female characters depending on others for help instead of being too strong to need it, this is fine. You don't have to like it yourself. I don't mind it. This literally happened in the musical. It's fine. But then if Eric did say Vero this time, people would probably be weird anyway and go, Disney's telling us that black people need to be saved by white men or something. And I mean conservatives and grifters and leftists alike. If there's a will, there's a way. 
Ariel and Eric's relationship got a big upgrade here. I thought it could have been better in the original movie anyway. Their romance is believable. I loved seeing them together. They're adorable. Just like the original movie, Eric fell for Ariel because she shared a passion for fun and adventure like him. But this time it's more clear and there's an extra element to it with how they both have controlling dismissive parents. Lots of people didn't pick up on why Eric really fell for her in the original movie, so this remake not only fleshes out his relationship with her, but his own separate character a little more. The scene where Eru shows the wonders of the sea to Eric in his own grotto like she has? Eric saying her name was written in the stars? Ugh, they were meant for each other. I really liked that one scene where Ariel turns back into a mermaid and Eric holds onto her even tighter. That that didn't happen in the original movie, bro was flabbergasted. And then in the remake, for him to stumble out of the water soaked and half dead just to pick up Ariel's torn dress that washed up on shore and scream for Grimsby to get a boat so they can go looking for her? That's romance. That's true love. I also seriously appreciated that there wasn't a single ounce of self-awareness within a movie about a talking fish girl. I worried the Little Mermaid remake would give in to CinemaSins and his fans by stopping the audience from completely suspending their disbelief, which has happened in other modern Disney movies. It feels like the execs think that adults can't enjoy genuine whimsy because suspending our disbelief is apparently silly to do for fiction. A lot of Disney remakes prevent us from completely suspending our disbelief by constantly making characters remind the audience in some way that what we're watching isn't realistic. This phenomenon of self-awareness and fantasy storytelling has gotten real annoying real fast and I personally think that sometimes it'll show the creators aren't confident in what they're making. CinemaSins and people like him have made it really popular to seriously question the logic of talking animals and cursed inanimate objects. Thankfully, this movie wasn't made with him in mind, but some things could have been better too. Again, these are mostly nitpicks, but whatever. It's a current trend for Hollywood movies to be visually darker in general. When I saw this movie in a theater, I could see what was happening on screen just fine, and it looks better there than on my phone, but the color palette's too muted for me. It doesn't have to look like the upcoming Barbie movie, but I really do wish the colors popped more. But let's be real, the Little Mermaid remake looks leaks better than some of the clips I've seen of House of the Dragon. Like, how do any of you watch this and then act like this remake looks just as bad? Genuine question. I would have liked some more creative, eye-catching cinematography too. There are some really nice shots, but I wanted more. I need more shots to put on my Pinterest boards. I need more cool editing for people to put in their TikTok compilations. Javier Bardem for Triton didn't really move me. His character felt pretty flat until he realized he screwed up his relationship with Ariel. I wish he was more lively and less stoic. Ariel's sisters rule over their own respective parts of the sea, and they got like seven minutes of screen time. I thought the remake would improve on that, but just like the original movie, I almost forgot Ariel even had siblings. I'm sorry, her sisters were cool, but I wanted more. I also wanted to see more mer people because it looked like Atlantica was mostly empty of them until the very end. My biggest nitpick is the severe lack of show-stopping dresses and jewelry for Ariel. She doesn't even have any beads or rings in her locks. It was such a missed opportunity to go crazy with Hallie's hair and deck it out like like princess hair right the potential gone but never forgotten and maybe i would have forgiven that if ariel had more costumes and especially more dramatic ones because she has four different dresses in the original movie not including her nightgown but she doesn't get that here the honeymoon dress she does have at the very end is a nice color but not something to write home about why couldn't they give her glimmer on land it's time to get serious and put some sparkles on her arms i thought the blue dress was really pretty but it overstayed its welcome later on it got torn when ursula took her back under the sea and for some reason, Triton didn't give her a new dress when he turned her human. She walked on screen with that blue dress all torn and soggy. They did her dirty in the costume department. Give me a dinner scene ball gown where she walks barefoot because the heels make her uncomfortable or something more, but there's some bigger fish to fry. I really liked listening to the older songs, but I thought the Under the Sea number had some cognitive dissonance going on. One disadvantage to rendering realistic animals for fantasy movies is that the animals can't do things that cartoonier animals can do or else it 
probably look uncanny. So Sebastian's thinking about Newt playing the flute and a car playing the harp, but that's not what's happening on screen at all. The sea life can tango, but they can't play instruments or it'd look weird. And that's another reason I wish the animals had more of a balance between looking exaggerated and realistic. Kinda like Finding Nemo, sorta, I don't know. And even all the bad faith nitpickers are gonna be writhing on the floor because no one's asking how Ursula's tentacles glow. Some things are changed for another kind of audience member, for better and for worse. So the thing with Ariel is that people in mass have badly misread her character for years now, reducing her goals to just wanting to be with Eric and nothing else. In the original movie, she desperately wanted to be human before even meeting him, so Eric was more like an addition to that want. I personally think her catalyst wasn't Eric that made her go see Ursula to become human, but it was her father destroying her collection of human objects. She never said herself that she wanted to be human because of Eric. We only see her fantasize about being with him and nothing more. But then after her grotto was destroyed, Ursula and her eels put the thought in her head that she could be with Eric by turning human. Ariel even gasped when Ursula told her she could be human herself. Still, it became a common misconception that Ariel just wanted to give up her family and life under the sea for Eric. Lots of people also believe that the original movie was trying to imply that a woman shouldn't speak her mind so she can successfully obtain a man. This is what Ursula originally said and Eric did fall in love with Ariel while she was silent, but he didn't fall for her because of that, he fell for her because of her personality. In layman's terms, she was quirky and Eric loved that about her. She was the one who made him laugh for the first time since his shipwreck rescued by puffing a smoking pipe in Grimsby's face. While I do think Eric's personality could have been much better executed in the original movie, it's clear that he loved adventure and fun, and he also fell for Ariel because she had those same kinds of passions like him. However, there are many, and I do mean many, people who just couldn't see that. There are lots of popular bad misreadings of fairy tales in general, and Disney's retellings of fairy tales have arguably gotten the worst of this backlash, with lots of people claiming that several princess movies and characters are misogynist even though a lot of those claims are either shallow or are just made in bad faith. So it's honestly no wonder that the Little Mermaid remake would emphasize Ariel's love of humans more and try to actively balance out her goal of being human and also being with Eric. Hallie Bailey herself tweeted that she knew Ariel was already nuanced, but hoped the general public would understand Ariel's character better. Even now, people still misread her actions, even with the remake, which makes it really clear that she didn't give up her voice for Eric. I really liked this reworking through her dialogue and mannerisms and some of the new songs. Despite the fact that I'm real and I also understood her nuance, I really do think these additions did a lot for her character in this movie and gave her more internal conflict on screen. Unfortunately, other ways that this remake tried changing the misconceptions surrounding the story were much less effective, like completely removing lyrics from poor unfortunate souls. Not only is the body language line removed, but so are the lines where Ursula claims Arrow needs to be silent for Eric to fall for her. It was pretty jarring to notice all of that was skipped over. I don't like these lyric removals at all, but I could see the reasoning for it from miles away. I just wish the remake updated The Little Mermaid's public perception only through character actions and additional songs. Howard Ashman's lyric writing was crucial to jumpstarting the Disney renaissance, and he knew how to seamlessly put musical numbers in movies while still keeping audiences suspense of disbelief, making sure not to throw them off because characters started singing. He did this perfectly for The Little Mermaid, with Alan Menken composing the score too. Howard's lyrics were also very clever and emotional, and he used his talent for lyric writing to move the plot forward and encapsulate a character's wants and goals. So completely removing those specific lyrics from Poor Unfortunate Souls takes something away from these songs. I recommend the Howard documentary on Disney Plus to learn more about him. It changed the trajectory of my life forever. What a legend. His impact in art will live on forever. He's so cool. <laughs> At the same time, I know I'll sound like I'm contradicting what I just said, but I don't mind the lyric change and kiss the girl. I thought it was fine. I, I'm serious. The original lines didn't move the plot forward and the new lines fit in pretty well. It really wasn't bad. It didn't need to be changed, but it was, it was fine. It was fine. 
While removing and changing lyrics for the original songs was unnecessary, most of the new songs were, like I said, pretty good. I like Scuttlebutt's instrumental, where no one's talking or singing. Ugh. So we all know that a lot of the huge backlash against this movie is racist, right? Right? Now, this remake's gotten a disproportionate amount of hate compared to probably every other live-action Disney remake before it. A good chunk of it is, like, straight-up racism against Hallie. And before anybody says, Oh, well, this is obviously a new phenomenon and people weren't really vocal about previously white characters being race bent into black characters. Yes, they were? Yes, they were. Oh, well, nobody had a problem with something like The Wiz. Yes, they did. All the covert and overt racism makes it really hard to talk about this movie online without YouTube's algorithm specifically lumping you in with the self-haters and racist grifters who are too creatively bankrupt to move on to other topics on their channels instead of milking something over and over again as pure outrage content for money and clout. Even if you make a video defending the casting choices for this movie, YouTube's still gonna recommend you trash. There are legitimate criticisms about the Little Mermaid remake that's been drowned out by really weird and overreactive takes on everything it changes too. And all these bad faith takes have been for a movie that wasn't even out yet until just recently. From a subset of fellow black people who've made weird, unfunny jokes claiming that Hallie looked enslaved with her headband and period-based clothing, to that one loser who stole an artist fan work of Flounder for a popular hoax tweet and claimed it was Flounder's official design for the remake, the hate hasn't been coming in waves, more so like full-blown tsunamis from what I've seen online. As a side note, I feel really bad for the artists who got their work stolen for something like this. I don't care how you feel about these renders, using someone work for manufactured outrage is awful, not to mention the weird nitpicks and think pieces from more prolific people. A popular YouTube video essayist made a tweet that said, being a hater for this without being mistaken as a racist is going to be such a struggle. I'm not saying he's racist for this, but like, if you thought you'd even be mistaken as racist at all, then maybe you need to look within? You really didn't have to bring that up to say you think the movie looks bad. You can criticize it without coming across as racist. I don't know why you think you can't. I'm not saying that you're automatically racist for disliking the movie or thinking it doesn't look good. I get it. Again, these remakes have a track record of being, well, not that praiseworthy in the grand scheme of things. If you have genuine criticism for something like this remake, then no well-adjusted person with reading comprehension and media literacy will think you're being racist. It objectively sucks that right-wingers and grifters had taken over a discussion about media, but if you have to prove you're not racist to justify hating a movie that wasn't even out yet when you said you hated it, then of course people will look at you funny, especially because you brought up race yourself. You know there's a racist backlash against this movie and its leading actress, but for some reason you still made generalized, spiteful comments anyway and contributed to the rest of the hate through that? Before the movie was even out? Oh, I know Hallie's getting racism thrown at her left and right, but I'm not rating her movie unreasonably low on a movie review site because I'm racist. I'm rating her movie unreasonably low on a movie review site because I just hate the Scuttlebutt song. Cornball. While not everybody who dislikes this movie is racist, a lot of black people are still justifiably suspicious that all this overwhelming hate for this remake is due to anti-blackness. Because there's been several instances where that's been revealed to be the case, when someone gets suddenly interested in protecting the original Little Mermaid movie's legacy, despite showing little or no interest in doing so for the other Disney movies that were remade before. But once again, if you have genuine criticism, then no well-adjusted person with reading comprehension and media literacy will think you're racist, even if the well-adjusted person in question likes the movie too. I promise you, there are many Little Mermaid remake fans that don't mind the well-thought-out criticism and even welcome it. I am literally one of those fans! Believe it or not, we can like and criticize something at the same time. There's been some joke tweets about Ariel Man handling Flounder in one of the trailers too, because Hallie legitimately looks like she's struggling not to hurt him because his fans are too short for her to yank on. Personally, I thought this moment was really cute. She calls it a little trident. 
That's not the weird nitpicky thing though, and there's something to be said about the unnecessary realistic rendering of animals within a fictional story about a mermaid with talking animal friends. Personally, I don't like Flounder's redesign. It looks too much like a real fish, so his model doesn't emote like it could and should. It's indeed better than the Lion King remake, but it still looks too realistic to convey any clear facial expressions. However, Flounder's voice actor is doing a great job, and I do think it's cute that Flounder is much smaller since he's a scaredy cat and hides behind Ariel. But then another popular YouTube video essayist made it real weird real fast by claiming that Hallie playing with his hyper-realistic fish would impose a serious danger on real fish in the real world because kids would want to play with fish like Hallie did in the movie, and they can't tell that this interaction is fictional because Flounder looks too realistic. The thing is, people have had misguided perceptions of animals after seeing certain movies. Jaws caused people to hunt more sharks when they don't usually attack humans in real life. Finding Nemo caused people to adopt clownfish and blue tanks but failed to properly care for them. But Finding Nemo was fully animated with designs that were stylized as much as possible while also including a child character that obviously mistreated her pets. And the public still screwed up with real fish. The Little Mermaid isn't real either. All three movies mentioned are way too exaggerated to happen in real life. I don't want to say fiction doesn't affect reality because to an extent, it does. I literally just said that it does. But like, Ariel's a mermaid, she's half human with a fish tail, the animals around her talk. Like, it, it's not real. As someone who nitpicks sometimes, I think you all need to calm down expeditiously. Even Aladdin's remake actor who played the titular role tried throwing shade at the Little Mermaid movie by implying it wouldn't make as much money as 2019's Aladdin did, and that it wouldn't be rewatchable like the actor claimed Aladdin was. He said, Our film was unique in that audiences went to watch it multiple times. It's the only way we reached the billion dollar mark with our opening. My guess is that the Little Mermaid doesn't cross the billion mark, but will undoubtedly get a sequel. Mind you, literally nobody asked him. He was being a hater just because. And why exactly did he think the Little Mermaid remake wasn't going to perform that well and that it wouldn't be enjoyable enough to rewatch? Well, it's too late to ask him on Twitter because people ratioed him so badly on his tweet that he deleted his account. Trust me, the quote retweets were in the thousands when I saw the original tweet in real time. He also claimed that black people have the highest representation for minorities in Hollywood, listing other underrepresented people of color afterward, which is very funny because for one thing, Hallie is currently the first black Hollywood mermaid protagonist ever. I didn't know we were in the lack of rep Olympics. Based on what I just said, black people are definitely not winning and neither is anyone else. We're talking about a lack of representation in Hollywood here. I don't know why he's acting like it's a competition all of a sudden. Like, like, <laughs> this fun fish film's got everybody seething. But you know what? Let's be honest. Let's be real. I've seen much more positive press and promo for this remake over the Aladdin one, and despite the hate The Little Mermaid's gotten, I'm still seeing active excitement for it in real time. The promo's been unavoidable. There's fan art everywhere. Can you say that about 2019's Aladdin? I don't think so. I don't think so. I also find the fake, concern about girl boss feminism takes to be funny because these people will usually say they think female characters are being rewritten to be shallow girl bosses when many of them are actually just mad that there are attempts at feminism in these stories at all because they think that being socially progressive at all is bad and the only political thing out there. Like. Putting aside the people who are obviously right-wingers, you can just tell that the people who agree with them seriously believe that there's an ongoing shortage of white girly female characters who also simultaneously take more passive roles in storytelling, and that a female character's meaner personality in general makes her badly written and annoying, but male characters can be much, much worse people and still be praised to high heaven no matter what. I'm not saying there isn't a place for criticizing girl boss feminism in fiction since the execs deciding these writing decisions could be out of touch. I also hate pop culture's superficial idea of feminism as much as an ex-feminist, but most of the time when fake concerned people claim ironic misogyny on the writer's part for these characters, these people are just mad that female characters are taking more active roles, which they think are indicators of feminism poisoning our media and way of life. They don't like nor care about feminism, they're using it as a dog whistle. 
For this remake, they may bring up the good point that Ariel and Eric saved each other on separate occasions in the original movie, but I don't know, do they really care about that? Because if they did, they wouldn't be saying Eric's emasculated of all things for not saving Ariel this time, and they'd probably know that she defeated Ursula herself in the musical version of before. Instead, they're acting like the remake made that plot point up on the spot. Eric's got more presence in the remake than he did in the original movie, but from a storytelling perspective, of course it'd make more sense for Ariel to defeat Ursula, because Ariel actually has a personal connection with her. She's the one who made the deal with Ursula in the first place. Eric barely knows her. This change isn't gonna end the world. It's fine. It's alright. It's okay. But one of the arguably worst things that's come out of all this mess was the supposed reason that Hallie was even cast. There's a really gross sentiment that some people have that Hallie Bailey was, for all intents and purposes, cast as Ariel because she's black, right-wingers, or at least people who like to grift for them, claim Ariel's black now because Hollywood has an agenda to make everything socially progressive, and to right-wingers, being socially progressive at all is bad and the only political thing out there. Because of course they think that. But a lot of left-leaning people also think that Ariel's black now to get more people to talk about this movie in general and therefore make even more money at the box office. There are some people who specifically believe that Disney's using Hallie's casting to silence any genuine critics about the movie. These people argue that anybody negatively talking about this movie at all will automatically be lumped in with the racists because apparently irrational Halle Bailey fans will think you're racist for just criticizing a movie with the black protagonist. And I need to stress once again, even though there really was racist backlash against Hallie because of her casting, that doesn't mean you have to constantly prove you're not racist to criticize the movie itself. But yeah, according to these people, it's neither Hallie's singing voice nor her acting talent that got her this role. The biggest reason, if not the sole reason she was cast, was because she's black. It's a diversity hire, or affirmative action if you will, and seeing people, liberals, and right-wingers, and moderates alike imply Hallie's casting was mostly due to her race, whether to push some kind of marketing tactic or agenda makes me sick to my stomach. I'm not saying diversity hiring doesn't happen, but it's very weird to see people claim this is what happened with the Little Mermaid remake when it's been proven that Hallie's extremely talented and perfect for this role. I also hate the bad faith arguments that immediately imply that blackness doesn't just exist in fantasy fiction without some kind of scientific or historical explanation. White people are usually written to be universal in fiction in general, so neither their race nor their culture, if they even have one, will factor into their stories. There's usually no reason why characters like Aurora from Sleeping Beauty have to be white. Of course, there are expectations, but an overwhelming amount of fiction won't be about how race affects white characters' lives at all. On the other hand, black Americans like to joke that every other movie about a black person is about slavery or systemic racism in some way. Or in other words, a lot of stories about black characters aren't just stories where characters just happen to be black. These characters' race and or cultures will be ingrained in their stories more often, making these elements important to portray them. For general examples about people of color, Tiana dealt with dye racism while working her way to owning a restaurant. Mulan was adapted from a Chinese legend with themes like filial piety, which is a virtue specific to Chinese culture. There are many more examples, but the bottom line is that neither Ariel's whiteness nor culture factored into her story whatsoever, and for some reason, people are making fools of themselves to argue why it's not realistic for a fictional humanoid creature to be black. But no one bats an eye at all the talking animals and octopus women with magic powers. And, and, people will argue that it's not ethical or realistic to depict black characters in completely escapist, fantastical stories, and we always gotta bring up our history with slavery or racism in some way. That argument in itself makes you wanna chew on carpenter nails. Are stories about racism and slavery important? Of course they are. Can you make escapist stories while ingraining a character's culture into their story? Of course you can. But does every story starring black people need to be about racism and slavery? No! Just let black people have this. Let little black girls have this. Are we just not allowed to have things and relax? It's a mermaid movie. It's a movie about mermaids. We do not need to include slavery in a mermaid movie, Marcus. It's just a movie. It's pretend. If you're an adult, you should know that. 
Yes, it's important to talk about how media representation in fiction is handled, including race bending. But the very ironic thing is that the people claiming Hallie was mostly cast for her blackness are also coming off as, um, well, racist. As if she didn't get this role for her raw talent, which is extremely obvious and especially on the Little Mermaid soundtrack itself. I don't know, maybe that's just me, and I'm falling for the so-called diversity marketing tactic. I did just want to see this movie for her after all, but a bunch of people wanted to see the Beauty and the Beast remake because of Emma Watson. Lots of people saw that remake, so am I really any different from them? Sorry to break it to you, but Hallie is a popular celebrity. Of course, her casting's a marketing tactic specifically for that, but so are the other celebrities with these remakes, or really any other movie with a popular celebrity for that matter. Emma Watson, Danny DeVito, Adina Menzel, stop playing in my face! As for Ariel's hair color, it's still red in the remake, but some white redheads still complain that she was taking redheaded representation from them, even though her hair in this remake is, ironically, more of a natural red compared to the original Ariel, a shade of red that you can't have in real life without getting from a bottle. Hallie literally said that the only thing she had to change about her hair was the color, she had to dye it red. I was grateful to Rob Marshall for saying, you know, we're reimagining this character. She should be allowed to have her hair and wear her hair the way that it is in all of its glory. Just make it red because Ariel's hair is red. But if her hair was still tomato red, if it was Eve's flip that era red, some white redheads would still complain. Because they don't care what Ariel's hair color is, they're just being racist. They only care that she's black in this new movie. That's it. Because they wouldn't be complaining if it wasn't about race, would they? It wouldn't matter to them what color a character's skin is, as long as that character still has red hair. Right? There are so many, and I mean so many, white redheaded characters in media that even official white redheaded Disney princesses outnumber official black princesses. Because there's only one as of right now. And Ariel wasn't intended to be redheaded either, she was going to be blonde. But the one reason the character designers changed it was to not have her resemble the mermaid character of Splash too much. A movie that Disney made through another company. Like, your red-headed rep isn't going anywhere. But my black princess representation was halfway ripped from me through Tiana's original whitewash design in Wreck-It Ralph 2. So no, I wouldn't like it if Tiana was whitewashed. She already was before. That's already happened with one of her current face character actresses at Disney World. Characters of color have already been whitewashed. They're currently being whitewashed and they'll continue to be whitewashed. It's literally happening right now with the Lilo and Stitch remake which was also originally a movie that deeply ingrained the protagonist's race and culture into the story. Nani's live-action actress isn't native Hawaiian either, by the way. You weirdos couldn't give two flipping fins about companies whitewashing characters of color and their stories. But, for some reason, you just complain about race bending. Or, you only bring up whitewashing when complaining about race bending. Companies within a white as default society whitewashing characters of color when there's already less representation for characters of color is not the same as a white character being race bent. A white character who's written to be the default and is written within a society where they're considered the default and majority. I might get some pushback for this. I don't care. Jesus may not have actually been black, but he definitely wasn't white, and he's been whitewashed for I don't know how long. None of you said anything about that, but since you lot want to act obtuse about all this, then fine. Let's train. You go make Tiana white, we'll make the rest of the white Disney princesses black. I see no problem with that. Do you? Alright, I'm going inside. You can just stay here and watch for sharks. Okay. Yeah, you go. I'll stay in. What? And believe it or not, people are making their own characters while simultaneously race-bending characters they like. They aren't claiming their race-bent headcanons are better either. They already love those respective characters. But these weirdos don't care about original characters. They just don't like seeing black people on screen at all, unless these black people are in shackles or being denied service because they're black or their background characters. Diversity ruins the experience for these people, and it's even more obvious that they feel that way because these same weirdos hate original character movies, like Black Panther, and they hate characters who were already established to be at least brown. I won't forget all the backlash against Rue's casting in the Hunger Games movie because of her blackness, when she was originally described to have dark skin in the novel. 
does she have dark skin in the movie? No, but people still hated her because she was black. If you want to see original black Disney princesses, then go see Wish in late November or... Oh, you don't even want to do that either, do you? You lot have nothing to say about all the mediocre and even bad movies that are shameless white guy power fantasies. Did you ever think that a lack of diversity ruined a movie? Why not? Do tell. I already know the answer, but tell me anyway. Stop being vague. You say that diversity ruins a movie, I know what you're doing. And to the black people who'd prefer original on-screen representation over race-bending white characters, I get where you're coming from. Personally, I have no problem with this. You already heard my spiel about white people usually being seen as the default. It's not ideal that we need positive representation in the first place because of all the history with anti-blackness. Of course I want original stories about black people by black people, but if you're rationally upset about Hallie's casting while also trying to seem agreeable and reasonable for only validating original black characters, you're a weirdo too. You're still throwing hate at her, you're still being weird about it, I know what you're doing. I'll admit, I was hooked with Hallie's casting. Saying she has a beautiful voice is an understatement. I could tell she embodied Ariel's character to a T in the trailers I've seen. I was still excited to see that in action despite my fear, good movie or not. But I felt obligated to defend this movie because of all the racist backlash Hallie got when it was announced she'd be playing Ariel. The hate was getting worse by the day. And just like many other black people, I questioned the true intentions of several of these people endlessly mocking and trash talking every little thing about this movie. Like, I know the animal characters could have looked more expressive than they do. But are so many people really upset about the lack of stylization for these animals? Or are they just using it as another dog whistle so they can huff and puff with no real pushback? No. Like, like, do they really care? Do they really care about the color grading? Do they really care about Arrow and Eric having an equal dynamic in their relationship? Do they really care if these remakes are going to respect and embrace the spirit of their original movies, but still stand on their own for new generations like the Final Fantasy VII remake did? No, they don't. They just don't like that Ariel's black. These people very likely wouldn't even be picking apart this movie so much if she was still white. And sorry, I feel like neither would the more left-leaning people who made weird tweets about it either. That last part was proven true for one example I found. This person has made malicious tweets about the remake promoting imperialism and being anti-black because a black girl is playing Ariel this time. Mind you, this is a musical about a mermaid princess in a fictional world with talking octopus women and magical objects. Someone else pointed out how it was very suspicious that this is the movie that got them heated lately, even though this person hasn't watched it, and they definitely don't like the original movie either. They also quote retweeted a post about the review bombing The Little Mermaid has gotten specifically due to anti-blackness with a tweet about how they're different for hating the story because they think it's imperialist. Basically. This is another one of those corny tweets that are like, I don't hate this specific movie because I'm racist. I hate it because XYZ. I'm different. I'm real. Please like me for not making racist memes or spewing slurs. As someone who likes to analyze things and look deeper into them, it's gotten more and more obvious that there's a difference between someone just looking into something from a more political lens because it's interesting, even if you think that person's looking into it too deeply and then someone making overblown, bad faith arguments about something. You lot are not as smart and deep as you think you are for doing the latter. Like, wow, you must be really fun at parties. Or do you think they're symbols of imperialism and anti-blackness if black people are having fun at them too? It's just a movie. It's pretend. You're an adult, you should know that. And I know for sure weirdos had to come up with something else to complain about besides Hallie after her version of Part of Your World dropped on YouTube. They couldn't trash talk her casting anymore because now there is undeniable proof that she was going to eat up this role. So then they had to say something else. Anything else they could use as dog whistles. No matter if it was an understandable statement or not, anything could be used for malice. The really funny thing about all this is that the Little Mermaid remake isn't hateable. It's actually really good. Everyone, even fans, know it's not the best movie of all time. It doesn't have cinematography like Moonlight. It's not an in-depth character study like Pearl. But it's also definitely not the worst Disney remake out there. It's interesting that so many people are acting like it is. It's one of the much better ones. Despite my complaints, it was really good.
I've seen less outrage over the Lion King remake than I've seen for this. People have indeed joked about 2019's Lion King, and there are several viral video essays about it, but I've seen far more vitriol for this year's Little Mermaid. For every person who hated the new Lion King, there currently seem to be five more people calling the new Little Mermaid the pinnacle of lazy Disney movies without a speck of creativity and mocking anyone who likes it. Out of all the others that came out, this is the one that breaks the camel's back. This is your limit. This one, this is the one that needs to be rallied against. It needs to be review bombed no matter what because it's a bad movie. It needs to be dislike bombed on YouTube. You know, before the movie even came out. But I never saw this same energy with any of the other remakes. You lot really want me to believe that this one's just as bad as 2022's Pinocchio, which missed the point of Pinocchio's character doing bad things in the original movie and proceeded to sanitize his actions and had a non-talking cat in entirely made out of CGI to top it off. It's just as bad as 2017's Beauty and the Beast, which missed the point of Beast's character becoming a better person in the original movie and just kept him a jerk when Belle only came around to him in the original movie when he became kind and respectful, along with badly auto-tuning Emma Watson's voice instead of leaving her voice alone or getting someone else to sing for her. It's somehow just as bad as 2019's Lion King, and you know what people are saying about 2019's Lion King. There's absolutely no way that this amount of backlash and hatred stems from anti-blackness in any way, shape, or form. No, it's got nothing to do with racism, I promise. The people have just finally taken a stance against these remakes, and they're doing everything in their power to let Disney know, even though half the people who hate the Little Mermaid one are probably the same kinds of men who'd ignore it if the protagonist was still white. Because they don't mess with that girl stuff. Ick! But no, Hallie was a diversity hire. She got hired so the African Americans can spend more money on this movie or spread a socially progressive agenda. Which is bad. She's just not that convincing as Ariel, despite every professional critic I've seen praising her for this role in some way, even for more negative reviews. But actually, nothing good came from her casting. Those sinking chops are not that good enough for Ariel's character and ooh. Just listen to her. Ugh! It's a mystery as to why all of these critics are endlessly praising her in the first place. The world may never know. It honestly didn't matter if the remake was actually good, because while it'll inevitably make serious bank at the box office, people will still use dog whistles to basically say that they hate black people in their movies, and they hate black people in their movies even more when those black people are starring in fun escapist roles. You know, when they're not suffering. If the movie flopped with critics, people would have said they knew it was going to be bad and blame Halley's casting. Even though many critics are praising it, people will inevitably say those critics are getting paid to do so and are the next worst thing in the world since the devil himself woke. <laughs> Still, the creators didn't just get it right with casting the main protagonist, they built on the original movie's spirit and narrative too, and I gotta applaud that. Something about seeing little black girls excited that a mermaid character finally looks like them in a Hollywood movie is so bittersweet. On the one hand, they should be used to seeing more and more black girls by now, so to realize that Halle Bailey really is the first black Hollywood mermaid protagonist ever is depressing. That should have happened already, and it should have happened many more times after that. It has been 14 years since we got Tiana, and we're just now getting our second original black princess through Wish. And we don't even know if she's canonically royalty yet. <laughs> But on the other hand, seeing little black girls excited about this version of Ariel puts a smell on my face. You are legitimately a horrible person if you try to downplay that in its significance. As someone who also loves mermaid aesthetics because of the original Little Mermaid, I can still only count the number of fictional black mermaid characters I know of on one hand, and only one of them's in a more mainstream story as the main protagonist. Let's just hope that at the very least, this movie will get many more stories about black mermaids, fairies, and other pretty sparkly magical creatures into the spotlight too, and eventually, no one will have to journey through the deep depths of the internet to find them. <laughs>